Tonight, cheaper fuel tipped for regional Queensland. A lucky escape for a Toowoomba family. And police swoop following the assault on an elderly Charlton woman. This is the Toowoomba Win Local News with Des McWilliam and Selena Downs. Good evening. Good evening. Regional Queenslanders should see cheaper fuel in December under the state government's new fuel subsidy scheme. It'll pay service station operators directly to eliminate oil company rorts, but it's feared farmers won't share the benefits. Peter Beattie was in a good mood this morning. How's everybody? He's pleased about his new plan to lower the price of fuel in Queensland, hopefully making it the cheapest in Australia. The government's new fuel subsidy scheme will see benefits passed directly to the consumer. We want to stop rip-offs because this is about the subsidy being paid directly to Queensland motorists. And that includes people on the land. People on the land are going to be better off under this scheme. Under the new plan, the government will pay its 8.35 cents a litre subsidy directly to service station operators instead of oil companies, which the Premier's long criticised for not passing savings on to consumers. But not everyone's happy. Agforce describes it as an administrative nightmare for farmers. Now for primary producers as bulk end users, um, they've really uh, tightened up on the scrutiny that they put us through in order to qualify for this and, and then to claim the subsidy back. Work. But the Premier says they should stop complaining as his scheme works the same as the federal government's. I say to Agforce, stop whinging. This is exactly the same system that operates federally. If it operates federally, why can't it operate on the same basis at a state level? No, I just think it's unreasonable for Agforce. Bulk consumers will see the benefits in October, the general public in December. Meantime, Mr Beattie's urged motorists not to let rising fuel prices fuel support for One Nation at the next federal election. He says rather than turning to other parties, motorists should maintain pressure on John Howard to do something about fuel excise. Alastair Kingston, Win News. A Toowoomba family was lucky to escape injury last night after fire broke out in their kitchen. Flames quickly took hold of the chamferboard home located on Rose Street, Centenary Heights. The blaze started as a stove fire just before 7 o'clock. Neighbours watched on as firefighters ventilated the rental property as best they could. Unfortunately, damage inside was extensive. We responded to a structure fire. Uh, three units attended this incident. Crews uh, managed to limit the damage to the kitchen area of the structure. Uh, however, the rest of the building suffered smoke and heat damage. Investigators don't believe the blaze is suspicious. Detectives have charged a 26-year-old Toowoomba man in relation to the theft of an elderly woman's car. Officers also recovered her vehicle, discovered at a home in East Toowoomba. Sunday morning's assault on 89-year-old Mai Jarrett left her shaken, police describing the incident as cowardly. The elderly woman was woken by two females, one of whom threatened her with a knife then pushed her to the floor. Mrs Jarrett says a male offender also entered her home, walking across her legs as if she wasn't there. A group of four accused of stealing her car, two of those people interviewed by police overnight. Detectives charged a 26-year-old male person uh, with the unlawful use of a motor vehicle pertaining to uh, a victim who was 89 years of age. Uh, at this stage, detectives are still searching for a male and female offender involved in the robbery with violence. Mrs Jarrett should be mobile again, police recovering her vehicle from a Godfrey Street home. Meantime, investigations continue into last week's assault and robbery of a Toowoomba woman outside her James Street unit. The victim was grabbed from behind as she attempted to open her car door, the offender hitting her head against the vehicle, punching her in the face and fleeing with her handbag. And a number of residents have attended the Toowoomba police station today to help identify property suspected of being stolen. Detectives seizing the items from a storage shed on Alderley Street yesterday. In relation to the suspected stolen property, we're still asking people to come forward uh, if they've had power tools or hand tools stolen of recent times. Christina Harrison, Win News. Better roads, rail links and more water are the keys to developing Toowoomba's economy. An economic development meeting at Council today discussing ways to boost infrastructure in the region. Toowoomba's developing at a rate of around 1%. A good start, but a long way from the optimistic target of 8%, as seen at the Gold and Sunshine Coasts. Federal Member for Groom Ian McFarlane identifying private enterprise as the key to boosting infrastructure development in the region. Obviously the big issues in terms of 
developing the economy of this region still relate to a better road access to, to Toowoomba, new rail links, more water availability for primary produce. Council also on board encouraging private enterprise to improve the economy. And that's something that uh, Council has looked at already in, uh, in the past six months and uh, we expect that within this uh, Council term there will be a number of such developments. The Buy Local campaign, another hot topic for Council today. Mr McFarlane stressing the importance of keeping the money in Toowoomba, saying if people don't buy locally, they don't create jobs locally. It uh, amazes me that people drive to Brisbane to buy goods. The reality is that we have a very good range of shops here and, and uh, the prices are extremely competitive. Lisa Chalk, Win News. Toowoomba's Office of Fair Trading has issued a warning to residents to be wary of a new lottery scam circulating on the Darling Downs. International swindlers are telling residents they've won thousands of dollars in exchange for a small fee. If you do send any money overseas, you are taking a risk and that risk is that you are going to lose your money and get nothing for it. That's the official warning from Toowoomba's Office of Fair Trading on the latest scam to reach our mailboxes. The Premier Premiums Lottery described as an old scam with a new name, where residents are told they've won thousands of dollars at a cost of just $39.80. The department as a whole has recently received many complaints, most of the letters arriving in Queensland from the Netherlands. Unfortunately for every person that says something's wrong, there are a lot more who are writing out cheques and sending them overseas. Toowoomba residents in particular are receiving a similar mail out from France, but in order to collect their winnings they must send the fee to America. In this particular case there are, they are telling people uh, that they've got the opportunity to win uh, 12,000 US dollars and all they have to do is send $10 uh, back to, uh, to the address in America. Mr Boys says for a person to win a prize, they need to have entered a competition. People don't give away money for free. Unfortunately, scam artists target the aged and those who are cash strapped. And the bad news, once they're on a mailing list, they can expect to be plagued by such scams for years to come. The Office of Fair Trading have absolutely no jurisdiction against any of these companies and that we simply cannot prosecute them because they're beyond Australia's reach. Christina Harrison, Win News. Stay with us coming up, visiting Pommies take on the Aussies in a local cricket match. Then brides galore at a charity fashion parade. Tonight a win from ES Special. The highs and lows of Australian rock in the 70s. Skyhooks, Bee Gees, Marsha Hines, Molly Meldrum and more. When rock was young too, from ES 8.30 tonight on Win. Australia Zoo. Not just your ordinary zoo. Go wild on a family day out. Go wild with over 500 animals. Go wild at feeding time. Go wild with 10 shows a day. Go wild. Go wild at Australia Zoo, where crocs rule. A million flowers in bloom. Events and activities throughout Toowoomba. The Grand Central Floral Parade, Saturday, September 23rd. A new Queen Crown. The Ergon Energy Flower Show under a massive marquee in Queen's Park. Toowoomba during the Carnival of Flowers, the nearest place to heaven. For information, call 46324877. Proudly sponsored by Heritage Building Society and Toowoomba City Council and supported by Wind Television. Go Harvey Norman for the biggest range and best prices on air conditioners. Buy now with no deposit, no interest and nothing to pay for 12 months. That's right, no interest and nothing to pay for one full year. Hurry in for an LG room air conditioner, $599. Save $200 on an Electra 2.5 horsepower reverse cycle air conditioner, $999. Fujitsu 2.5 horsepower reverse cycle split system, $2199. And cool and heat the largest of areas with an Electra split system, $2999. Beat the heat and save heaps this summer at Harvey Norman, your air conditioning specialist. Limited time only, see store for details. You're invited to one of the highlights of Carnival Week, The Orchid Show. A breathtaking mass display of some idioms, exotics, natives and floral art. The Orchid Show, St Paul's Lutheran Church Hall, September 22nd to the 29th. Silly Sully's Big Brand Supermarket Specials, Pack of Four Golden Circle Fruit Bites, 175, Pack of 24 Hundred Shape, 495, and Praise Fat Free Dressing, 180. Don't miss them, the Fat Free Dressing, 180. The Arnott's Pack of 24 Shape, 495, and Pack of Four Golden Circle Fruit Bites, 175. 
You're watching Win Local News. Although federal cabinets yet to finalise the fine print, farmers and conservationists are welcoming a proposal to buy back landholders' tree clearing rights. The multi-million dollar scheme aimed at curbing Australia's land degradation and salinity problems. If the proposal is adopted, the federal government will buy back the land clearing rights on both free and leasehold land across Australia. It's believed the plan, which could run into hundreds of millions of dollars, will be funded through the National Heritage Trust and is just one element of a wider natural resource plan which will see land degradation and salinity targets linked to Commonwealth funding for the states. While yet to see the fine print, the proposal's already got the blessing of environment groups who claim it's long overdue. A program like this is, is um, long overdue. It will be the only way that the federal government is going to be able to meet its target of having no net loss of vegetation in this country by the middle of next year. He says the idea has even greater relevance for Queenslanders with over 400,000 hectares of land or 85% of the nation's total cleared across the state each year, considered by many to be a contributing factor in the widespread salinity problems plaguing the Murray-Darling Basin. Queensland could very well be contributing to that problem um, a great deal in the future as more and more clearing occurs here because that's going to unleash the, the salt potential of this state and, and put it down through the Murray-Darling system. So, I mean, basically the writing's on the wall for the environment. Although unprepared to comment on the scope and detail of the proposal today, Deputy Prime Minister John Anderson did confirm the situation in Queensland was a cause of concern in Canberra. The issue of losing the right to clear without proper compensation is probably the most common one that is raised with me and uh, that's where I've always made it plain that I believe that people's property rights have to be recognised and respected when governments want to make take action. Kirk Costa, Win News. A brochure promoting one of Toowoomba's oldest tourist attractions was launched today, Picnic Point, the latest hotspot targeted by Toowoomba City Council. And you can hear the birds and the sky so blue and I mean it just adds to the feeling of being Australian. The Olympics not the only event inspiring patriotism this week. Councillor Sue Englart encouraging people to take advantage of the beauty in their own backyards. The launch of a new brochure promoting Picnic Point, a perfect way to do just that. I launched the Explore Picnic Point Park brochure. I think Picnic Point is synonymous with Toowoomba. It's got two faces. It's got the, the, the top face, as I call it, which is gardens and swings and a, a typical park with its beautiful views. But below that, there are the bush walks and the natural escarpment settings. This latest in a series of brochures put out by Toowoomba Council will encourage residents and visitors to better utilise Toowoomba's parks by highlighting their unique features. The school holidays bringing an influx of visitors to Picnic Point today, Toowoomba's escarpment getting the appreciation it deserves. The brochure not only outlines the park's most popular tourist areas, but includes the hidden parts not everyone knows about. Lisa Chalk, Win News. Preparation for the Toowoomba Carnival of Flowers is in full swing this week. Local businesses, schools and community groups are busy putting the final touches on their carnival parade masterpieces. With the carnival countdown underway, those involved in Saturday's parade are rushing to complete their floral floats, many of the displays requiring big workforces and months to prepare. We started working on the float about three months ago, so um, all of the flowers are handmade and that was the first thing that they started making, so it's taken quite a while to put it all together. Despite competing with the Olympic Games, organisers are confident the carnival will be a success, saying participation in this year's parade is set to rival that of last year's 50th anniversary celebration. I know the total entries is, is similar to last year, and, and last year was a huge parade because it was our, our 50th anniversary. The parade set to wow spectators with a feast of never-before-seen entries and the regular features like the award-winning Wilsonton School Marching Band. Wilsonton has taken out the Champion Junior Band Award for nine of the past 15 carnival parades. Today given the trophy as a keepsake. The trophy's now full in the sense that uh, we can't fit any more winners' names on the trophy. So we decided that um, as the school had won it on so many occasions, it should be given uh, the trophy in perpetuity. Over 30 floats will weave through the streets of Toowoomba on Saturday with tens of thousands of spectators looking on. Lisa Honeywell, Win News. Well, the Olympic Games are bringing out the competitive spirit in all of us, but none more so than for one family. Toowoomba's Martin Luther School Oval today became the, became the scene of a Pommies versus Aussies cricket match. in trouble, I'm telling you. <laughs> All the best. Don't get my boy. Make the best team win. Don't get too upset. Make the best team win. 
Local resident Joan Nimmo convened the match. She moved to Australia 35 years ago. But it's taken an event as big as the Olympics and a family wedding to encourage dozens of her relatives to reunite with her down under. So with the Olympic spirit raging, they sought out a team of Australians to battle it out in the sport we inherited from the mother country. In an unusual twist, England actually won this game, 145 to 144. There was a bevy of bridal dresses, both old and new, on show at the Salvation Army Hall in Toowoomba today. Hundreds of senior citizens flocking to take part in the annual charity concert and bridal parade. If you organise it, they will come. That was the thinking behind today's gala at the Salvation Army Hall. We've got them from Gindawindi, Englewood, uh, Clifton, all over the downs they sort of come through it. The old time band inciting a frenzy of clapping and toe tapping from the audience, merrily trotting out those golden tunes from yesteryear. But the band graciously bowed out before the bridal parade got into full swing. I don't know the difference between an inverted bleep and a gusset. <laughs> But before the blushing brides took to the aisle, vocalist Peggy provided the perfect segue. We're on our way to say I do. Angela was first, boasting a two-tier veil headdress of pearls. Myrna and bridesmaid Kelsey followed on in a lace frock with satin trip necklace hem and train. But it was Oriel who stole the show, modelling her own wedding dress from 1957, which featured a sweetheart neckline. The crowd halting proceedings to pass on their congratulations. Oriel, was that as nerve-wracking as your, as your wedding day in 1957? Not really. Not, not as bad. And after 43 years, did she have to loosen the waistline? Well, you're no. still the same time. Exactly the same. Money raised from the day goes to the Police Citizens Youth Club boxes, heading to the Australian Championships and the Horizons Club. Tom Forbes, Win News. Under the share watch now, an MIM was down four today. The National Bank also lower, closing at 24 and 2. Evans Deacons was 40 stronger. Gold and the All Ordinaries both down today, 42 and 12 respectively. Sports along next, and we'll be checking on Michael Katsitas ahead of his next Olympic boxing assignment. Plus, we take a look at Toowoomba's first international cycling criterion. On a current affair, the consumer shame files. It's a form of blackmail. Where a debt of just $5 can ruin your reputation. It's scary. It is scary and it's very annoying. And you can't do anything about it. The modern way to pay for all your computing needs is to flexi-rent them from Harvey Norman. Flexi-rent computers, printers and software for your home or business. You can flexi-rent the latest Hewlett-Packard computer and a colour desk jet printer from just $19.38 a week. With FlexiRent, you can always stay up to date because FlexiRenting allows you to trade up as technology changes. FlexiRent and get the solution you really need. Credit conditions apply. See your tax advisor about tax deductibility. Look at the savings here, here, here and here. Savings galore. It's Franklin's Fresh and Big Fresh bonus pack sale. Two litre Schweppes Cola, two for the price of one. Yes, two dollars for two. Pork barbecue chops, three ninety eight a kilo. Middle bacon rashers, six ninety eight a kilo. And four kilo bags of pre-packed brushed potatoes, three ninety eight a bag. Savings galore during the bonus pack sale at Franklin's Fresh and Big Fresh. Grocery specials also available at No Frills Village Fair. You're invited to the second annual Queensland Festival of the Horse, October the 6th to the 15th. There's a huge range of equine activities, including carriage driving, trail riding, camp drafting and one-day events. Tuesday the 10th, it's the Equine Hall of Fame lunch. On Wednesday and Thursday, take part in the stud tours as well as polo and polo cross on the 12th. Plus, don't forget the grand finale, the Chronicle Equine Expo weekend, including the Barristock Horse of the Year. For bookings and details on the Queensland Festival of the Horse, call 46312 78. Tonight, 9.30, he was sent to do a job. The National Crime Authority got him into the wild dogs. He came out living the life. Who are you loyal to? Now, you are going to have to choose, Devlin. An operative too close to the edge. Stingers undercover tonight. On to win sport and Toowoomba boxer Michael Katsidis is gaining a great deal of support in his Olympic campaign, despite his snubbing by Australian coach Bodo Andreas. The fact that the Garden City boasts seven Olympians is also giving the boxer added enthusiasm as he shapes up for a semi-final qualifier this Friday night. 
After Mick Katsidis's refusal to take part in competition sparring in the lead up to the Olympics, he's fallen foul of Australian coach Bodo Andreas, but they've since agreed to disagree in his Olympic assault, though his boxing talents are being appreciated by some of the greats, since recording a 15-6 result against a Brazilian opponent in his opening bout. I've had Jeff Fanny, Costa Ju, uh, coming and visiting me before my fights and there's been morning shows where they've been uh, talking about me a fair bit and um, it's great to have Joe Bugner behind me, um, tipping me as Australia's best gold medal chance. Toowoomba is well represented in Sydney. Nicky Hudson, Angie Skirving and Michael Brennan part of our hockey team's successes, while synchro swimmer Danielle Leash, shot putter Justin Enlazark and cyclist Nathan O'Neill waiting for their opportunities. And it's that sort of presence which is giving Conceitus an added drive in his approach. But in Toowoomba we've got the best of athletes, we've got the best of support, we've got the best of training and, um, and you know, we, we will have the best of results. After everything that's been gone, going on in the team, you know, I can feel the full force of Australia behind me um, and particularly um, having so many people from Toowoomba, it um, even makes me feel more at home. Katsidis is pushing himself through three tough hit outs during the day to maintain his fitness under regular coach Mick Beatros. His next assignment will see him up against an opponent from Kazakhstan on Friday night with a win there to push him well and truly into medal calculations. John Carsberg, Win News. And for those sports fans throughout the entire Darling Downs region who'd like to show their support, they can send some special messages by Herofax on 136 329. Round 9 of the Queensland Short Circuit Touring Car Series saw just over 40 competitors take part in Milmerran. Michael Dawes in production class showing his consistency in the feature to outlast Grant White. Bruce Mitchell holding off the challenge from Brian Hull and Graham Kelly in the improved production. The battle raging all day in Formula 6 and it was Hull taking the chequered flag from a fast finishing Glenn Krause with Joe Bunker competing the minors. While Krause avenged in Super Sport and Darren Cooper toiled hard in the juniors to collect his first ever feature success. The Norwegian cycling team couldn't have asked for a better preparation towards their Olympic road race campaign, totally dominating round six of the Queensland Cup series. They then backed up that performance in the afternoon to shine in Toowoomba's inaugural international criteria. Following their course strategy, the 10-member Norwegian contingent were taking things fairly seriously and with Australian and Great Britain teams also in attendance, the sixth and final leg of the Queensland Cup promised to be the best yet. Powering through the opening stages of the 140 kilometre course. All riders intent on maintaining pace out in front, and it was Aussie representative Tony Mann faring best of the home nation. The lead procession keeping track of each other over the opening hour of the trek before a lead group of around eight riders took the initiative. As mental and physical fatigue settled in, some of the front runners began to ease up, and that was the cue for the Norwegians to make their mark. Two riders opening a handy break out in front while another of their fellow countrymen pushed hard behind, hoping to keep in touch. His determination rewarded within 20 minutes as he roped in his teammates, and that made things even easier for the international contingent. As the main pack jostled hard, the Norwegians cruising, and able to take the top three placings. While man the first of the Aussies, settling into fourth. The Twilma Criterium leg of Sunday's competition saw all riders backing up, and again it was the Norwegians showing their class. Although considered an individual event, the overseas competitors worked the numbers game to perfection, with two riders gaining a 400 metre advantage out in front, while the remainder played the blocking game. Again a 1-2-3 finish for the visitors, with Mann taking fourth, while local under-19 rider Jared Grove performed above expectations to be the third Australian home. Stay with us, the weather's along next with Peter Byrne. Then Art Quilter step out of the past and into the future. Weddings, where are they now? From here soon on Wind Television. Wind Television proudly supports Norma O'Hara Murphy. Australia's top singer-songwriter and golden guitar winner is coming to your town. I was driving down the highway on a moon. Singing all those wonderful award-winning songs just for you. Book your table now. Don't miss this wonderful artist live in concert on her final farewell tour. You know, there's been a lot of wild claims about paint lately. But let me give you the drum. 
I paint for a living, and the one paint I rely on is Solver Maxi Wash for an unbeatable interior finish. It wipes the rest away. And you can use the Maxi Wash colour selector to pick the perfect look for your home. Everything from kids' rooms right through to elegant dining rooms. And right now, you'll get expert service and advice as well as great prices on all Solver products. BMS Mitre 10, three big locations in Toowoomba. Silly Sally, Big Brand Supermarket Specials, Pack of Four Golden Circle Fruit Bites, 175, Pack of 24 Hundred Shape, 495, and Praise Fat Free Dressing, 180. Don't miss them, the Fat Free Dressing, 180. The Arnott's Pack of 24 Shape, 495, and Pack of Four Golden Circle Fruit Bites, 175. Jenny craves taking off for summer. Lose 10 kilos for just $10. Join now and get 10% off at the athlete's foot. So call Jenny Craig on 131 992 and take off for summer. With easy access, fast connection, and the latest technology, 24-hour-a-day backup, support, seven days a week, and backed by the world's leading IP network, WinNet is the internet service provider that gives you the world. Call 1-300-139-949 and get online with WinNet. It's a big world. The band! Come on! It's the ultimate home makeover. Nine shows, 72 hours. Renovation Rescue 2 soon. Good evening, weather watchers. Well, I'll tell you what, if I had a dollar for each time someone has asked me over the last couple of weeks when it's going to rain, I'd be a very rich man. Now, climatologically, September is one of Queensland's driest months. Having said that, looking at today's temperatures, there's all the uh, main centres along the coast. Now, rainfall for the 24 hours ending 9 o'clock this morning. Cardwell, 2 millimetres. Tully, 1. Maroochydore reported 0.2, but I bet my bottom dollar that was probably 0.2 of a millimetre of dew. Otherwise, state extremes 35 at Windora and uh, Birdsville, and 6, would you believe, at Monto. OK, the first of the satellite pictures tonight. Generally, this is taken around about 4pm this afternoon. This greeny colouring is high-level jet stream cirrus coming very rapidly in from the southwest and northeast. And we can identify some low-level cloud, perhaps a few showers around the Cairns district there. But otherwise, most coastal radars are completely devoid of any echoes. On the continental picture, what can I say about that? You can see the origin. We've got a very uh, meridional flow, so the wind is more or less coming up like this and from the southwest and then the northwest. So it's all over the place like a Labrador's breakfast. OK, not so the chart. We'll have a little discussion on this one next. The ridge will be maintained for the next three to four days at least, thanks to the uh, high in the Tasman Sea. Now that high will step back, would you believe, in the next couple of days. This western trough will weaken. So apart from isolated showers down the coast about as far as Mackay, it should be fine apart from early morning fog patches anywhere from, uh, say, Rockhampton south to Brisbane for tomorrow. Let's check the forecast for the north tropical coast and tablelands. Isolated showers along the coast and ranges, mainly early morning, otherwise fine inland. Next, we look at the Herbert and Lower Burdekin, isolated coastal showers developing mostly or mainly uh, north of Rolling Stone, otherwise fine elsewhere for Thursday, isolated coastal showers. Further south for the Rockhampton district, fine apart from some early morning fog patches, east to northeast winds and continuing fine for the following couple of days. For the Toowoomba district, the Darling Downs and the Granite Belt, dry with some haze, light to moderate winds from the northwest to northeast, a moderate to high fire danger and continuing dry for Thursday. For the Bundaberg district, Wide Bay and Burnett, fine though some smoke haze, early morning fog patches near the coast, light to moderate northwest to northeast winds and a moderate to high fire danger. And finally, for the beautiful Sunshine Coast around Maroochydore and Caloundra, fine though smoke haze, light southwest to west winds in the morning, moderate afternoon sea breezes during the afternoon, and fine for Thursday. Consider yourself meteorologically briefed. Thanks a lot, Peter. Finally tonight, the Darling Downs Art Quilters Group have launched an exhibition ahead of its time. Progression's Art Quilters Step Into the Future is their latest exhibition, which is currently on show at the Toowoomba Regional Art Gallery. It showcases contemporary textile art by quilt and fibre artists from across Australia and New Zealand. The selected works represent quilters' moves into the expressive freedom of the future. That's our bulletin this Tuesday night from all of us on the Wind News team. Good night. Good night. This has been a Wind News presentation from Australia's largest regional television network.